Uh, so just please note that um, your participation is welcome. We'll have a question and answer session in, at the end. Um, you are able to submit your questions via the chat feature at the bottom of the screen, um, or you can join us through the audio on your computer or the audio on your phone if you dialed in um, to today's call, um, but those questions uh, will be recorded. Okay? So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So again, um, today's session is for organization administrators in the new MyGenieMay portal. We already hosted a session on how you onboard your end users into the portal, and hopefully many of you have already started doing that. Um, you filled out your own registration invitation and began uh, sending registration invitations to the user in your, users in your organization. Now we're going to talk to you about how you manage those accounts. So once those users have actually established their accounts, um, how do you complete basic functions to keep them up and running or to control access on behalf of your organization? Um, so we'll cover a few objectives um, and then give an, uh, an overview reminder of the onboarding workflow. Uh, and then I'm joined today by Wade Gale Bank New at the Bank of New York Mellon who is going to talk you through some um, basic functions, how you can go back in and review the status of uh, a request that you've sent um, once you've tried to add a functional role, what is the status of that. He's going to talk to you about how to add and remove functional roles, update um, a user's profile attributes like adding an RSA token after the account has been established, locking and unlocking account, enabling and disabling account, and how to reset a user's password. Um, there are a few troubleshooting tips for those of you that are um, maybe encountering um, a few errors as you're sending registration invitations. We'll talk about how to troubleshoot those. Go through some of the reports that are in the portal. Um, you might need to produce reports for auditing reasons, maybe a list of active users in our systems, and you can do that on your own. Uh, and then we'll give you um, some resources from the modernization page that you can reference and also send your users to before we open it up for a question and answer uh, session. So let's move on. Okay. So here's what we hope to uh, accomplish today. We want to give you some guidance on how to review the status of an account request, um, access request. An access request is when you have requested a functional role for um, an end user, and sometimes it might be unclear exactly what the status of that functional role is, um, or maybe you're waiting for another organization administrator to go in and approve that functional role, or maybe they've done that and you're waiting on the operations administrator to finalize that functional role. If you have questions throughout that workflow, there are ways to to um, identify where that request is and Wade is going to talk you through how to um, find that information. We're also going to provide information, as I mentioned, on how to um, do basic management functions on end user accounts. Um, just remembering that these are functions that are now completed by organization administrators um, and not our customer support um, team at uh, the Bank of New York Mellon. We're also going to give you some high-level information on troubleshooting a few problems and where you can go for help, and provide you an overview of the reports that are available to organization administrators through the Access Management Console, um, with one report in particular being particularly helpful. Um, it's called the Functional Role History Request Report. Next slide. So, you have seen this um, before. If you've been to an end user training, an org admin training, the Ginny Mae Summit, um, if you've been within five feet of me, you've seen this workflow. This is the My Ginny Mae onboarding workflow. Um, and you have already um, participated in this workflow for the simple fact that you have an account in the portal. Um, so now you are undertaking the work of getting your users um, onboarded into the portal. And so you've begun sending registration invitations for your end users to complete. They've been filling out those registration forms. Org admins in your organization have been approving those forms and requesting functional roles or access for those users. You've been approving that access. And our operations administrator, um, you know, at Ginny May, um, through the Bank of New York Mellon has been approving those so that your users can have access to My Ginny May and um, the systems that are in My Ginny May, now housed in My Ginny May, GMAP 1.0, GinnyNet, 
our modernized MFPDM um, multifamily pool delivery module. Um, and so you've, you've already um, seen this workflow in action if you, are, if you have an account. Um, and what we're going to talk you through, um, once you've been through this workflow and an account has been established, how do you maintain and manage those accounts? Um, what do you do when your users, um, you know, get into trouble, um, need a password reset, or need an additional functional role? So once you've been through this workflow, how do you go back in and, and manage those accounts? That's the part we're going to focus on today. If you need more information about how to onboard end users, we um, welcome you to go to the modernization page of the Ginny Mae website. There are resources available there, including the Access Management Console user manual that walks you through how to take each and every one of these steps in this workflow. We've also posted um, a recording of the training that we hosted uh, earlier where we focused on how to onboard end users, and you're welcome to watch that training there, there um, that recording that's posted. Um, but we are not going to be covering those steps in this training. We are going to focus squarely on what you do now that those accounts have been established. Next slide. Okay. So just a quick reminder, um, there are certain functions that an end user can complete on their own. If they have forgotten their password, um, they want to register or deregister for the Oracle Mobile Authenticator on their smart device to have that one-time PIN delivered. Um, you know, those sorts of functions, updating their phone number and their account attributes, they can manage on their own. And then there are certain functions that you as the organization administrator are going to be responsible for. And then the final step, um, final acknowledgement, um, the operations administrator on behalf of Ginny Mae um, conducts, um, and that is the, the one function that they conduct in this, in this process. As I mentioned, today we're going to focus on removing a functional role from an end user, enabling and disabling, locking and unlocking an account, resetting passwords, and updating account attributes, specifically the RSA token um, after the account has been established. We highly encourage you or your end users to enter that RSA token serial number at the time that you create the account. If you don't do it at that time, you can add it later. So a little, little more labor intensive, but we'll talk to you about how to make that happen. And those are the things that we're going to be covering today. Next slide. So here's what you need to know. Um, the last training that we offered when we talked about how to onboard your end users, we showed you how to log into My Ginny May and go to the Tools drop-down to get to the Access Management Console, the AMC. Organization administrators um, exclusively have access to this console, and this is how you onboard users and manage those user accounts. The last time we had this conversation, um, we were really focused on the um, other three tiles on here, new user registration tile, access request tile, pending approvals tiles. We were focused on you know, those tiles in terms of sending registration invitations and managing that onboarding workflow. But for this particular training, we're going to focus on that user management tile um, and the actions that you can complete underneath that, that tile in the AMC. As I mentioned, Wade Gale with the Bank of New York Mellon is here today, and he's going to talk you through the next step. Wade? Thank you very much, Leticia. Good morning, all my MGM experts. I know I've seen activities for the last week and a half since you have been onboarded. So we're just going to try and guide you a little bit more in terms of how the process will help you in terms of taking care of your end users. So of course, those are the four tiles that you are used to, and we're going to concentrate on the user management tile. The sections that we're going to concentrate mostly on the user management tile. That's where you'll see the most likely the profile and the functional roles of that end user that was, that was given those, those functional roles. And just want to tell you on some of the statuses you'll, you'll notice also when you go in and bring up that person's profile, you'll see a pending status, you'll see an approved status, sometimes you might see a finalized status, and you'll also see a con confirmed status. So you as an org admin want to get used to what those status mean because it will help you in terms of making sure that the end user does have the proper function, functional roles, 
and they're actually confirmed so that person can log in and start doing work via my Genime. So you have to like select in the desired user and you go, you go down to where it says manage user permissions to open up that accordion and that will, you'll see the actual what, what functional roles were assigned to that person. The system is going to display the functional roles, of course, and then that's when you look at the status. If you look at our first arrow where it says, just to give you an example, it says the, the role name. And right across from the role name, it says status is approved. What that is telling me that the second, most likely the, that the second org admin went in and, and did something. So you want to, you want to look at those status for that user. So this, end user is not actually ready to log into the system. You don't want the person to log in. So let's just ver look at what these statuses mean. Pending, of course. The functional role request is submitted and awaiting the org admin approval. That's the second admin. You remember you have to follow the workflow. You, one person does the Start, start the process, then the second one I have to do the process before it can continue to, through the workflow. Approve, the functional role is approved and awaiting operation administrative action. That's us here at the BNY Mellon who act as the operation org uh, on behalf of, of Jenny May. Finalize, so when we go in and we do our action, it goes into a, in a finalized status. I mean, it's not done yet. It's finalizing, and it takes a while. It does its stuff behind the scenes to, to, to get ready. Now, once you see that word confirmed, that means the underlying roles have been fully assigned to that user. At that time, there should also be notification going over to that end user, telling them that the roles have been assigned, and they should be able to log in. So you want to – so those are some of the things you want to look at. You want to look at the pending. You want to make sure you see approved, and if you need to nudge your second org admin, hey, I have some stuff out there for, for approval for Wade Gale. Could you do it? So because this person is dying to get into MGM and start a process in via GeniNet or in, in the RFS space. So you just want to finalize, and once you get confirmed, that is telling the end user that they're good to go and they can actually go in and log into the system. And one way of doing that too, to actually, you can see the full progression of this. You can actually click right where it says on the role name, and there's an underlay overlay behind this behind it that gives you the statuses and the date of all the roles or the entities in in that role, and you can see the status there. So that tells you who the first approver was, the second approver proof and who the finalized person is. So that also gives you a chance to know the, the full process there. Next slide. And this says add functional role. Of course, surprisingly, for this week, we have been seeing users add functional roles. So they did take or they listened to us when we were doing that session earlier, and, and they were able to, 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 to follow the process. So, of course, end, end users do require, require functional roles in order to, to do their the work, and you have to do that in a user management. Uh, that's where we're concentrating in today. And if you, in the user management, Charlie, you can edit the user profile, and right at the bottom here where you see request access, that's where you can click on that and, and proceed to actually do, to, to request the, the functional roles for that person. So, that's, that's Let's pay attention to that. So that's one of the ways you can do this. This request would subsequently have to be approved, of course, and a second org and, and and finalized by the operation admin. So we have to get into the mindset that and because I'm going to assign the role, the process is over. We have to remember there's a workflow. So that's what we really have to start getting in our heads now. As this new org admin, there is a workflow that has to be followed and maintained to the end so that end user can be authorized to get in and do their processing. So we just have to keep keep that in our, in our head. Next slide. And this just tells you how 
how to actually how you can actually see where what the functional roles are and it's, you'll have to go on where it says manage user permissions and the, what it does it displays displays the the role and by any chance you might have given someone a role that that person should not have gotten you you have the ability to go in and 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 remove that role so right where it says the little check box right here you'll just click where it says select just check that box and go down to the bottom and and click on remove just to remove that that functional roles from the person and again the system is su supposed to set up that you only give the functional roles to that particular u end user that the roles that they need you don't want to give them populate everything because it says multifamily there you want to give them all those roles and those are not their their function you give them roles according to what they do not everything there on the on the that comes up on the on the functional roles so you can actually remove a role if something was done by by mistake in also in that user management area. Next slide. Okay, uh, Leticia had, had spotlighted this a little bit earlier uh, with the RSA. Of course, you know, if you're an authorized signer, you're also given an RSA token, so so you can actually do your your submission if you're using it for GeniNet and also if you're using it for your certification in, in RFS. This piece is very, very important. So if you uh, set up, whenever you send this invite out to the end user and they put in that, make sure if they do have a RSA token, they're actually putting a nine digit from serial number from that RSA token. Because what happens once they get a functional role with the RSA token role in there, that it's going to generate a a notification. That notification is going to come to us, us here at BNY Mellon to actually process and provision that that token with the with the new information that was generated. Now, if you as a org admin did not do that initially and you went in and edit that person's profile and add that token it also generates a notification but this time it this notification comes to you directly so you have to look out for that if you put in the, the RSA token after the notification is going to come directly to you and it's going to give you specific information or instructions on what to do. Part of that is to make sure you get that information, click on the link and get all of that RSA information to us at BNY Mellon so we can do the provision for that user. So it's not all lost. If it wasn't done up front, you can do it again. Once you go in and edit and put in that RSA token, it's going to generate that notification to you. So you have to make sure that you get that information and you pair and you forward that to us so we can actually do the provision for your RSA token. Very important because if that person is not provisioned with the new IDs, then they won't be able to go in and translate their pools on in the GenNet space right now or in MFPDM or do RFS certification. So that's very important. Next slide. Yes. One of the popular things that we get here at our support desk, and now, you know, because it's now self service, unfortunately, I won't be able to take your calls on these unlock, unlock things. So I'm just, it's just, I'm just tearing up right now because I won't be able to talk to you for this now anymore. This is now be self service. So if a end user now get locked out, they're not going to call my team anymore, they're not going to rely on you as the org admin to, to assist them. So you just want to make sure you do that and just tell you what happens here. A user can become automatically locked out of their account due to three failed password attempts, or if an org admin has manually locked their, the account via AMC. Locking a user account is a temporary action and can be reverted. So this temporary action now can be reverted by the org admin. There's no need for that end user to actually call us at our 800 
833 Jenny May Help number is they're supposed to actually reach out to you and you will be able to perform that function. That's one of your functions as a org admin in the new MGM space, my Jenny May space. Next slide, please. Okay, another one also, enable and disable account. A user account may become ultimately disabled after 90 days, so we encourage users, you want to try and log in within 90 days of that 90 days span, because if you don't, that user account is going to become disabled, and also the functional roles will go away. So that gives so that gives the org admin more work. That means you'll have to you'll have to enable that account, and you'll have to also restore those functional roles for the user, and have to go again through the workflow. So you just want to encourage your users to make sure you log in within 90 days and keep your your login and, and that user ID and your functional roles up to date. Enable the account and advise the user to log into MyGenMe within 24 hours. That's another, that's another thing. If you enable an account and that person doesn't log, log in, it's going to go back to, NA, to disable. So you just, those are things that you – there are new things that – might not have been a part of the, your old space of in the GMAP. So these are just things you'll have to get used to. But as you go into the system and start using it more, those things will be just come second nature to you. So you just if you unlock a user, just want to make sure you tell them, you want to log, make sure you log in within 24 hours, because if not, those, it's going to go back to the original state, and you don't want that to happen. Org admin should manually disable a user account if the user has left the organization or other organization specific reasons, maybe change your role, change your position, change your department. Of course you want to get that person disabled if they're not using the, the, the system anymore. So it kind of gives you an idea of how this is done. And the org should wait when you're actually doing this process or this task. You want to wait for the action ribbon to display the end that the, and ensure that the action has been completed. Just at the bottom here, you see that you, this message success, successfully enabled. You want to make sure you get that to make sure that that process is completed successfully. Next slide. Reset a password. Oh man, I'm going to miss my users not calling me for this anymore because for Genome now, it's a responsibility of the org admin if this happens. So you don't need to call us for this anymore. This, we're, we're changing things. Since you're actually giving these users these roles and maintaining them, so it's your responsibility now to, to also do that. The service is used in an event that a user has forgotten their password and is unable to reset using the self-service capabilities, or they suspect their account has been compromised. Right at the top here it says reset password. What happens? It, it generates a temporary password and it goes to the person's email and with instructions on how to, to, to make the change and, and, and log in with that new password. The reset button is inactive if the user account is disabled, so that's one thing. That button is not going to be there, so if that person is disabled, you'd have to enable them and then you do the reset password task. You'd have to click on there and generate that password. So again, org admins, new org admins, the ones that are ready to go, this is going to be one of your functions for your end users. You're not going to be able to talk to, to us here at BNY Mellon. But, well, you can talk to us, but not in reference to these, these actions, actually. Next slide. Oh, I'm sure some of you might have experienced some of this earlier. If you, I'm just going to give you just some quick tips or just some things that you might experience while you're setting up. But this one is for the registration invitation. You, you're sending out an in, invite, or you saw this person did not get it. So this is just one of them. Three different errors may appear in an AMC when sending an inv invite to an end user. The first one we're going to look at is email already registered. That means you had sent an in invite to wade.gale at bnymelon.com, but somehow you're, you weren't too sure, or you thought Wade did not respond, and you did not actually check 
on the user management, and you went ahead and sent the same invite again. You know if you're going to get an error message for that. First, you're going to notice that the email section is going to come in a, like a in the rectangular section is going to be in red. And of course, you're going to get an error message saying something like, the email address is already registered in the system. The email address is already registered in the system. I read it twice. So that tell us right there that you cannot send another invite to that person because that email is registered in the system. Solution, since the system is configured to prevent invitation to email addresses already registered, if attempted to add a functional role, please refer to the section request functional role. Or if you are trying to add for another person, just make sure it's not the same email you are using for, that you used for Wade. It must be a dedicated email address to that person. It cannot be an email address that's already on the system. So that's one error message you are going to get when you try to do that during the registration. Next slide, please. Okay, this one. I'm not too sure if anybody has actually experienced this one, but there's a possibility that this might come up. The three invitations sent alert issue. When sending a new registration invitation to an end user, if an invitation has already been sent to the user email three times, an alert will be displayed as a warning. An invitation can only be sent to a total of five times. So if you send it three times, you're going to get a warning telling you, hey, Buddy, you have sent this three times. Just a warning. You have sent it three times. It's a warning message. No action is needed, but we're just going to warn you that you have sent three email messages or three invites to Wade Gale. So it's a warning. So you're not going to penalize, but we're just telling you that three three inv invites have sent out. And you also see the message there. A user registration has already been sent, and it tells you how many times. So. It, it comes up there and tells you that. So you just want to look out for those little things as a org admin. Next slide. And here's the third one. I don't have, nobody has gotten to this one so far. Five invites send the flag issue. When sending a new user registration to an end user, if the invitation has already been sent to the, end, the user's email a total of five times, the Email address will be flagged and additional requests cannot be sent. So I hope you have, we won't generate this message in our, in our processing five times. It says, user registration requests have been sent to the user more than five times. Please reach out to your administrator. And that administrator in this, in this instance would be us at BNY Mellon as the, as the operation administrator. And we will we will then try and figure out what needs to be done so we can clear this up and you can and process can continue. So those are some of the error messages you'll notice as part of the registration invite. Most likely you might have just picked up one or two because just maybe a typo or so, but if you do see these just just look out for them and remember that that's how the system works. It does tell you what you're what you're not doing right or what needs to be done. Next slide. Okay, reports. Of course, we as org admin, we have all these people in the system. We want to try and maintain, try to get an idea what is Wade Gale's role, is, was Wade Gale approved, what's the status of that. So we try and give you some reports. We're not going to go full detail into the reports here, but we just give you an idea where you can find the reports. And some of these reports can also be customized because you can also go in and, and, and do filters and try and come up with some that what might suit yourself. So we have uh, the AMC provides the organization administer and audit trail and additional insights into the user accounts for their organization in GenMay business. These reports capture logs and data if, event data for various identity and access management event. Now, you'll notice where we're on the link, you're going to choose security reports. That's where you'll go to get to, to generate those reports on the, on the link where it says security report. The following reports are available to org admin via the AMC. These are some of the reports that will, that will help you just maybe you might want this on a weekly basis, a monthly basis. Maybe it's also part of your internal audit 
So, so this might can help you. User registration, the report, OM organization user list, org admin view, user profile history, user registration request history, and that's, that's a custom report standard, and user registration is also a standard report. So those are things you can print. Then you have the access requests. And see functional role request history report. And you also have the multi-factor authentication report, account of lockout report, and authentication status report. And you have the self-service change password report. This is always a, an issue with some internal audit, just want to know what the activity is in the system. So we do give you some, I think, some very good report that can help you in terms of your, your daily or monthly processing and reporting to not even for yourself but in other areas in terms of auditing, out, auditing your users in terms of how they lo log in and log out of some of these applications. Next slide. And this screen just gives you a little bit more detail feel on how to actually retrieve ret retrieve the report. And at most of this most of this also can be found in the AMC user 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 manual. So you'll get more detail in how to go in and actually retrieve the report that you're looking for at that time to to help you with with your with your daily function. So we just kind of give you some some steps here and how to get into those reports. Next slide. And this just gives you a little more if you go into the MC functional role history report, this just kind of tell you what you have there. You have the request ID. You have the user login functional role name. You have the functional role type, the org key functional role status, the requester, the date the request was done, the approver, the approved date, the finalized date, if it was revoked, and the revoked date. So this is going to give you a lot of information. And if you don't want to see some of this at the same time, you also have the ability to actually put this in a maybe in a Excel spreadsheet. And if you want to try and do some things to make it your own little ad hoc report by doing some filtering, you also can you also can experiment in that, in that way too. As I said, the report can be filtered and sorted by selecting the drop-down arrows in the column heading. So you can make it and customize it a little bit if you don't want to see all of these things. You're just looking for specific things. You can customize it a little bit. Next slide. Again, just more information on how to report tips, how to download and save the report. Of course, you have to save in one of the options that they give you. We usually recommend you do the Excel because if you do Excel, you have the chance to do sorting and stuff. So you just want to use that function. And how to create a list of active user accounts. We also give you some some tips on that. And also, again, I'm going to reference to the AMC user manual to help you with, with some of these issues. And if you do get in any problem, you're still not clear, now don't hesitate. Now you can call us. And we maybe can try and help you resolve some of your issues. Maybe you were just missing one step. That's why the report wasn't generated. Then you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to try and walk you through and resolve that issue if you're, what you're having with the reports. Next slide, please. Okay, I think I have done my piece, and I'm going to pass this all over to Letitia, and then Letitia can finish up on the slides. Thank you, Wade. Letitia? Yes, You're can you hear me? Thank you. Okay, um, so that is, uh, in a nutshell, what we wanted to show you guys today. Um, there have been uh, questions about this PowerPoint being available um, after the session. We will be posting everything to the modernization page of the Ginny Mae website. But even more so than this um, training deck, I strongly encourage you to go look at the Access Management Console, or AMC User Manual. The steps for accessing reports and completing each of the functions that were listed in here um, are detailed in that user manual. So again, um, I encourage your first point of reference to be the access management um, 
console user manual. Uh, if there are general questions about portal, the portal, gaining access and um, portal functions, the Getting Started User Manual is also available on the Modernization page. But if there are questions about using the AMC, um, which is the application that our organization administrators have access to in order to onboard and manage end-user accounts, uh, go on and reference that Access Management Console User Manual um, to help you through some of those uh, items. Um, but uh, we do encourage you to join our Thursday weekly listening sessions. Those are held um, each Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time when we don't already have training scheduled um, so that we have uh, an opportunity to get your feedback and answer any questions. Um, we will host those, like I said, every Thursday that we do not have a training session already planned. Today we will not be hosting a listening session because there will be a session on uh, the multifamily pool delivery delivery module today at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We will also be hosting another repeat of that MFPDM training session tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, please do en uh, encourage you to attend. Please do encourage end users at your organizations that are responsible for pooling um, and that were previously completing those functions in GinniNet. Um, encourage them to attend those training sessions. The registration details are available on the modernization page of the GinniMay website for those training sessions. Um, so they can uh, find that information and get signed up there. Um, if you have any general questions, or I'm sorry, I should say technical questions about accessing the portal, using the applications like MFPDM or the Access Management Console, um, feel free to reach out to Ginny May Custer, Customer Support, that's Wade and his team at the Bank of New York Mellon. Um, they are happy to do what they can to assist. Again, we try to um, highlight the differences between who's responsible for what functions in the portal. So please don't ask them to actually conduct any actions on behalf of your end users. They won't be able to do that for you. But they can talk you through the steps and assist you with completing those actions. So absolutely lean on them as a resource, especially if the information that's available to you in the AMC user manual is unclear. Um, if you have general questions about training user materials or just um, general uh, questions about our release plans, um, you're welcome to reach out to Ginny May Customer Experience Group um, at cxg at hud.gov. Uh, we're happy to answer those general questions uh, there as well. We do have a poll for you to um, complete before you go, um, so please do um, answer our questions about how today's session went. Um, if there's additional content that you'd like us to cover or focus on, uh, mention that here. We will be hosting additional uh, offerings of this session, and we hope to get better and better every time we do it. Um, we're releasing the portal in several waves. Um, our next wave will include uh, many of our single family issuers as well as our subservicers. So we'll be having more sessions just like these targeting those groups. You're welcome to attend those sessions as well if you'd like to get some additional information. Um, but your feedback is helpful um, to us in refining these sessions as we deliver them. So please do take time to complete the poll. Um, we're going to go ahead and open it up for uh, Q&A. Again, you have several ways that you can join us if you would like to type in your question in the chat. Um, you are there at the bottom of your screen is, um, I'm sorry, a Q&A, and you can actually type questions in there. Um, or if you would like to type it into the chat, um, we are getting questions to the, the chat as well. But um, if you would like to ask a question through your computer audio speakers, please go to the bottom and raise your hand so that Ian, um, who is uh, managing our call for us today, can unmute your line for you to ask that question. If you dialed in on a phone today, please hit star 9 um, to indicate that you would uh, like to ask a question over the phone. Okay. Ian, do we have any, I don't see any questions in the chat. Do we have anyone um, on the line? We have one, uh, nobody on the line yet. Uh, we have one question regarding an, an administrator who's not currently on the 11702. Uh, uh -huh. What are the steps to get them access? Yeah, so if you need to add an org admin to the 11702, please reach out to um, Ginny Mae Customer um, Support. 
uh, that Swedes team. They have a form that they'll need you to complete, um, but you will want to get them added to the 11702, um, you know, uh, the Board of Resolution, so please take the steps necessary to do that internal to your organization. And then reach out to Wade's team at um, Jenny May Customer Support. That's 1-833-466. 2435 or Ginny May 1 at bnymelon.com um, and they can uh, walk you through what you need to do to get an org admin added um, to the Board of Resolution. Um, in terms of systems training, if you are looking for training on the multifamily pool delivery module, we are hosting a session this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and we are hosting a, a repeat of that session tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you go to the modernization page of the Ginny Mae website, the training details are listed, and you can register for those events there. If you are um, attempting to gain access to My Jenny May and you are not able to locate the email invitation that was sent to you, um, don't look for it because it has expired. Those registration invitations are only good for 24 hours. If you have not responded, you're going to have to reach out to um, Ginny Mae Customer Support to request that another registration invitation be sent. That is if you are an organization administrator. Um, it is the operations administrator at um, the Bank of New York Mellon on behalf of Ginny Mae that onboards our organization administrators into the portal. And if you did not respond to the registration invitation that they sent, it is no longer valid. It is only good for 24 hours and you will need to contact them to request a new registration invitation. And do I have other questions on the line? Nope, none at this time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, for the folks that typed in on the chat, um, if we didn't summarize your question correctly or get at the, um, the meat of what you were attempting to ask us, can you please resend those questions to make sure that um, we're, ask we're answering them appropriately? Okay. Anyone else on the on the phone line that is uh, something to ask a question at this time? Nope. No. No raised hands. Okay. As I um as I already requested, please do make sure that you fill out the polling questions. Ian, put those in the chat um, so that uh, Ian, if you can repost that feedback survey so that it's fresh. Um, yeah, please, please do fill out the survey. It really does help us refine the content. We're constantly um, trying to make sure that we focus on the things that you need for us to pop out um, and the things that are important to you. So give us your feedback if there's topics that we didn't cover or you'd like for us to um, provide additional training on, uh, let us know. Um, if you are an end user of the portal and need information on the multifamily pool delivery module, please plan to attend one of those sessions today or tomorrow and spread the word to others who might be interested. Anyone who's currently using GennyNet to submit pools on behalf of your organization, if you're a multifamily issuer, will need to um, begin submitting those pools through the multifamily pool delivery module. Um, so I strongly encourage them to attend one of those training sessions. If you're not available to attend those training sessions, we will provide recordings of those sessions. Those will be posted on the modernization page of the Ginny Mae website with all of the other resources, and you're encouraged to uh, watch that recording um, to get that information. We'll be conducting a live demonstration of the multifamily pool delivery module um, during those sessions um, and would love for your participation. Okay, that's all we have for today, folks. Um, I do thank you for joining us and um, have fun out there. Bye.